This meeting will now come to order. As part of the continued efforts to prevent the spread of novel coronavirus, COVID-19, this meeting is being conducted by video teleconference. We welcome those of you joining us via the, media po the meeting portal and hope that everyone is safe and healthy. I will now read the EPSB mission statement. The Education Professional Standards Board, in full collaboration and cooperation with its education partners, promotes high levels of student achievement by establishing and enforcing rigorous professional standards for preparation, certification, and responsible and ethical behavior of all professional educators in Kentucky. On August 24th, Executive Order 2020-702 abolished and recreated the Education Professional Standards Board to consist of 17 voting members. 15 members were appointed by the governor consistent with KRS 161.028 subsection 2A 1 through 4. The president of the Council of Post-Secondary Education and the secretary of the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet or their designees shall serve as ex officio voting members. All EPSB members will need to be sworn into the newly created board. At this time, I would like to recognize Leah Sharp to administer the oath. Ms. Sharp, thank you for joining us today. Hello. Before we begin, I just wanted to let you all know that I will read through the oath and ask for you to raise your hand. And then afterwards, I will ask for a roll call and then have you each individually um, swear or affirm this oath. Okay. So please raise your right hand. I do solemnly swear or affirm as the case may be that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of this Commonwealth and be faithful and true to the Commonwealth of Kentucky so long as I continue as a citizen thereof and that I will faithfully execute to the best of my ability the Office of Board Member of the Education Professional Standards Board according to law, and I do further solemnly swear or affirm that since the adoption of the present Constitution, I, being a citizen of this state, have not fought a duel with deadly weapons within this state nor out of it, nor have I sent or accepted a challenge to fight a duel with deadly weapons, nor have I acted as second in carrying a challenge nor aided or assisted any person thus offending, so help me God. Miss Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, I agree, I guess, or yes. <laughs> Thank you. Melissa Conley Sowers. <laughs> Melissa Conley Sowers, yes, I agree. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, I affirm this oath. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes, I agree. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, affirm. Sarah Jackson Green. Sarah Green, affirm. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, affirm. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, I affirm. Lisa Rudinsky. Lisa Rudzinski, I affirm. Stephen Scribner. Stephen Scribner, I affirm. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, I affirm. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, I affirm. Julian Vasquez Healy. Do we have Julian Vasquez Helig with us? Sorry, on mute. I affirm and agree. Julian Vasquez Helig. 
Thank you all. At this time, I would like to offer each member the opportunity to introduce themselves. I will go first. My name is Lisa Rodzinski, and I am currently a high school career and technology teacher with Fayette County Public Schools. I have been in this role for five years. Prior to becoming a teacher, I spent 22 years as a sworn member of the Kentucky State Police, retiring in 2014. I then served as director of the Kentucky State Park Rangers. I, am, I grew up in Bowling Green, but I now live in Mercer County, and I'm honored to be on this board with each of you. Serving as vice chair is Josh Trosper. Mr. Trosper, please introduce yourself. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Josh Trosper. Uh, I am currently the assistant principal at Knox Central High School. This is going into my fifth year in this position. Uh, I'm also going into my 17th year in education. Uh, I started out as an elementary uh, school teacher in Bell County. Uh, moved up into assistant principal role uh, in Bell County as well, and now at the high school level. Um, I, I, like uh, Ms. Rosinski said uh, before, I'm very honored to, uh, to uh, be a part of this board and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, grew up in, uh, uh, born in Middlesbrough, grew up uh, in Middlesbrough, Bell County, went to Campbellsville University uh, for undergrad, Union College, un uh, graduate school and uh, uh, live in Knox County with my wife and uh, three children. So uh, thank you again. Uh, I guess uh, we'll turn it over to uh, Miss Salyers. Hello, I'm Missy Codling Salyers and I've just started my 27th year in Boyd County. Um, I teach gifted and talented. Before that, I did elementary. Um, and before coming to Boyd, I taught in Bath County. I'm married and have four children. Um, three of my boys are at Eastern, and my daughter will be a senior. Um, and I'm our local VA president. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Elijah Edwards. Hi, my name is Elijah Edwards, and I'm a teacher at Boyle County High School. This is my seventh year teaching at Boyle, and it's the only school that I've taught at. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Amanda Ellis. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Amanda Ellis, and I am currently the Associate Vice President of K-12 Policies and Programs at the Council on Post-Secondary Education, and I serve as the proxy for President Aaron Thompson, and so glad to serve. Prior to that, I was at KDE for six and a half years as the Associate Commissioner of Teaching and Learning uh, and the Chief Academic Officer, and um, am in my 24th year in education, so teacher, curriculum coach, principal, all prior to um, joining the department and now CPE. So it's a pleasure to serve and continue to serve. I've served on this board in other capacities and glad to be here, so thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. Next, we'll hear from Kathy Gunn. Hello, I am Kathy Gunn. I am currently a social studies teacher at the Du Bois Academy in Louisville, Kentucky. I have been in education, I believe this is my 13th year. I've been a middle school social studies teacher as well as an elementary school teacher for maybe eight years. Prior to that, I was director of my family's child care centers, and I am also on our local JCTA board of directors for our local union. Nice to meet you all. Nice to meet you too. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Donna Hedgepath. Good afternoon. My name is Donna Hedgepath. I serve as Provost, Vice President for Academic Affairs at Campbellsville University. Uh, I'm actually entering into my sixth year serving on the board, the Sanders board. So I'm the oldest of everything, it seems. Uh, but I come from uh, spending about uh, 12 years in the School of Education here. I was the dean of the School of Education. Before that, I was a music educator, a high school choir director. And I'm originally from Western Kentucky, but I've spent the last 30 years of my life in Campbellsville. And uh, I'm now an empty nester and enjoying grandchildren. So it's great to see you all. 
Thank you. I would also like to thank Dr. Hedgepath for her prior service as the chair of the EPS board, and we are so glad that you are continuing to serve with us. Next, Loving I would it like from this side. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be talking to you quite a bit. Thanks. Next, we'd like to welcome Tracy Hunt. Hi, my name is Tracy Hunt. Uh, I am currently the principal at Marion C. Moore in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, unique in our configuration, we are a 612 school, so that's a middle and high school um, principal. Prior to that, I have uh, I was a, a high school English teacher, uh, also coached a few sports, um, a volleyball head coach, a girls basketball assistant coach. I've uh, been an assistant principal in a few locations as well as here at Marion Seymour before I was promoted to principal last year. Um, I currently live in Elizabethtown. That's where I was born and raised um, with my husband. And we have, I have two sons and I say two bonus daughters. So, and I am also um, very honored to serve on this board. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Next, Sarah Jackson Green. Hi, my name is Sarah Green, and I'm a teacher in Fayette County. This is my 17th year um, as a social studies teacher. I taught in Jessamine County before coming to Fayette County, and um, I've got two daughters that are in Fayette County Schools, and I'm honored to serve with everyone. Thank you. Next, Jacqueline Mayfield. Hi, my name is Jacqueline Mayfield. Uh, most people just call me Jackie Mayfield. I am a uh, kindergarten teacher at Middletown Elementary, which is in Louisville, Kentucky. I have been teaching for uh, about 15 years. This is, this is like a second career for me. I started out in the early childhood program and then rolled over uh, into kindergarten, and I love it. Um, before uh, teaching, I uh, managed some child care centers, and I also worked for the early childhood program called First Steps. Um, and thank you all for this opportunity. Oh, I'm also a, a JCTA board member, which is our local board. And um, thank you all for this opportunity. And I uh, look forward to um, working with you all. Thank you. We're glad to have you on board. Next, we, are, we will hear from Justin Mitchell. Hey, everyone. I'm Justin Mitchell. I am um, teach a social studies for Franklin Simpson Middle School. I've been doing that going into my 11th year. Uh, teaching that in Simpson County Schools. I'm the gifted and talented coordinator for Franklin Simpson Middle School, and I'm going on my third year uh, serving on the board. So I am honored to continue that with you all. Thank you, Justin. And I would also like to recognize Justin for his previous service to the board in the position of vice chair. And we are so fortunate to have you reappointed to the board to continue to serve with us as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Sherry Powers. Hi, I'm Sherry Powers, and uh, I am a former elementary school teacher. Uh, I taught in Harrodsburg and in Jasmine County, um, and a literacy specialist as well, and uh, then went into higher education when I finished um, all of, of my graduate work at uh, the University of Kentucky. I began my teaching career as a faculty member at Western Kentucky University. I was there for quite a few years and uh, spent a few years at Asbury University. And I'm now the Dean of the College of Education at Eastern Kentucky University. Um, I'm beginning my fifth year as Dean and my fifth year on the uh, board and enjoy serving with everyone. Thank you, Dr. Powers. We're very glad that you were also reappointed to the board and looking forward to sharing your knowledge and experience as well. Next, we'll hear, hear from Stephen Scrivener. Hi, everyone. I'm the chairman of the Jessamine County Board of Education. Um, I have served there since uh, 2018 when I was initially elected. I've been in the continuing medical education field uh, for almost 20 years. Uh, I'm a native of Lexington. Um, but I've lived in Jessamine County since 2008 with my wife and two kids. So uh, I'm honored to serve on this board with you guys. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from Carmen Souter. Hello, um, I am currently teaching kindergarten in Laurel County at a little elementary school, Cold Hill. And previously, I um, um, te was teaching at Mercer County um, for 22 
years and I've taught anything from kindergarten through fifth grade, every subject. So, and then my last, before teaching kindergarten, I taught art. So I've uh, enjoyed every grade and every content and I'm glad to be a part of this board. Thank you. And last but definitely not least, we'll hear from Julian Vasquez Heilig. Hello, everyone. I'm Julian Vasquez Heilig. I'm Dean of the College of Education at the University of Kentucky and a professor of educational policy studies. Um, in my past background, um, I was a 21st century learning program instructor, uh, fourth grade in East Palo Alto, California. I also taught uh, ESL and uh, worked in the Houston Independent School District and Central Administration. I'm just looking forward to uh, serving on this board, serving the families and students of the Commonwealth, and ensuring that they, every single child in this state has a high quality educator. Thank you. Well said. Thank you, Dr. Vasquez Heilig. I don't believe I left anyone out, but if I did, will you please speak up now? Okay, good. There's a few members that weren't able to join us today, so we'll welcome them to the board at our next meeting. Sharon Chesser joins us today as board secretary. Ms. Chesser, thank you for joining us, and please call the roll. Yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, present. Mary Pat Reagan. Melissa Conley Sailors. Melissa Conley Sailors, present. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, present. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, present. <clears throat> Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath present. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt present. Sarah Green. Sarah Green present. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield present. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell present. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, present. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, present. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, present. Lee Snell. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, present. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, present. Julian Vasquez Healy. Julian Vasquez Healy, present. We have quorum. Thank you. We will now move to the consent items. The following items are listed on the agenda as consent items. Letter A, approval of June 15, 2020, EPSB meeting minutes. Letter B, request to offer program at an off-site location, Campbellsville University. Letter C, Campbellsville University program approval. Does anyone wish to remove any of the items from the uh, consent agenda for further discussion? I recuse myself from B and C. This is Donna Hedgepath. Dr. Hedgepath, thank you very much. Dr. Hedgepath has recused herself from letters B and C. Does anyone wish to remove any of the items from the consent agenda for further discussion? Having received no request to remove items from the consent agenda, can I have a motion to approve consent items A through C? Stephen Scrivener, I'll make a motion to approve consent items A through C. Thank you, uh, Mr. Scrivener. Do I have a second? Justin Mitchell, second. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. The motion before the board is to approve consent items A through C. As this meeting is being conducted via video teleconference, we will have a roll call vote for each 
action. Ms. Cheshire will call the roll. I would like to remind each board member to please state their name, pause for a moment, and then state their vote. Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Sailors. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez High League. Julian Vasquez High League, yes. The motion passes. Interim Commissioner Kevin Brown, is he ready to join us, staff? I'm here. I've been here the whole time. Oh, great. Thank you. Interim Commissioner Kevin Brown joins us as Executive Secretary to the Board. I now recognize Commissioner Brown to provide his report. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, welcome new and returning members uh, to this most important body. Um, I, uh, as was stated, I am serving as the Interim Commissioner of Education, but uh, not for much longer. As you all know, Dr. Glass uh, yesterday was actually moving day for Dr. Glass. Uh, he is uh, around the, if you were having this meeting at the department, you would already see him in the commissioner's office. He's given us a few days before his, he actually starts, which is made for a great transition period for us. Um, and so he will begin his duties, as I like to say, the first moment of uh, September 14th. Uh, he will be your new commissioner. I'm really excited for all of you to meet and interact with him. Uh, the commissioner of education serves as the executive secretary of the EPSB. Uh, you may have Dr. Glass here at your meetings. You may have at future meetings. You may have an associate commissioner fulfilling that role. And of course, all of the hard work of the uh, executive secretary we have with uh, Sharon. Uh, so I want to thank her for that. Uh, under this item, we have several reports. Uh, I will recognize those individuals. Traditionally, we would have a report from the Education and Workforce Development Cabinet, of course, Secretary uh, and Lieutenant Governor Coleman, and that uh, is also normally presented by uh, Deputy Secretary Re uh, Regan. I don't think she is with us today. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, next, we have a report from the Council on Post-Secondary Education, Dr. Amanda Ellis. Thank you, Kevin. Good to see you. Uh, so just a, a couple things that uh, President Thompson wanted me to bring to your attention today. Um, as all of you all have been preparing for uh, school, of course, um, and the uh, post-secondary representatives on this council know this, that uh, Dr. Thompson has been in uh, constant communication with the campus presidents, preparing uh, for students to return since uh, they have returned and uh, constantly working on um, uh, really protocols to keep students safe and on campus and uh, being able to have an opportunity to meet with uh, their uh, their um, instructors when it's safe and, and really just adjusting to a new normal. 
Uh, the other piece is, um, as you may or may not know, there is a perform performance funding work group uh, that the universities are meeting with. They've met once and they actually met today uh, to begin uh, reviewing um, the model itself. It's quite comprehensive and this is just in the beginning stages. Um, there's also CPE, uh, like the idea so much of KDE with their student advisory uh, group that they have established, a student advisory group that represent uh, the student population on our, many of our campuses. So it's not all traditional students, they're adult learners who've come back. There's just a variety to help inform and guide decision making and considerations uh, for the Council on Post-Secondary Education uh, as we move forward. Uh, there are 21 students. Um, and uh, who are serving all the different, uh, representing all the different public universities and KCTCS. Uh, and a couple other things just to bring to your attention that CPE has been hosting a series of webinars on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, there was a two-part webinar that uh, President Thompson uh, hosted. It was called Education, a Catalyst for Systemic Equity, uh, focused on the value of diversity and uh, advice for fostering cultural competency among students. And this is a big focused area for Dr. Thompson and CPE uh, to move forward in this work. Um, it is online and available, and I would highly recommend you watch it. It's very informative. It's very good. Um, we've had excellent feedback from not just folks inside the state, but also across the nation. Um, and I think it's it's a great uh, opportunity and, and spurs a lot of discussion. And then the other piece I just wanted to bring to your attention is that CPE has partnered with a labor market uh, analytics firm, uh, EMSI, MZ is what we call them, and they have shared out on uh, on the need for engineers uh, in the state of Kentucky. Just recently, there was um, a report and a webinar on the healthcare sector and uh, the needs and what will be coming very much aligned to the KY stats trajectories and, and the workforce and what they're doing. So we're really uh, ramping that up. And in my role, uh, my role is somewhat new uh, and it is to connect the dots with K-12 into post-secondary. And so um, we are moving that forward and I'm working with um, Rob and his staff, uh, my colleagues, my former colleagues on just uh, improving the transitions from K-12 into post-secondary to truly have a seamless uh, pipeline for students. Um, and we are hopeful um, once Dr. Glass joins and uh, as Kevin said, he's transitioning rather quickly in a very unique setting, uh, but to co-lead a P20 council um, that's intentionally focused on different areas for improving the entire system from the time students enter preschool all the way till they exit up until uh, year 20, whether that be uh, with advanced degrees into the workforce, that it's smooth and um, accessible and folks are aware. So that's our report from CPE and I'll turn it back to you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ellis. Uh, next, we have a report from uh, Dr. Akers. Dr. Akers is the Associate Commissioner for the Office of Educate, Educator Licensure and Effectiveness. Dr. Akers. Uh, Commissioner Brown, thank you. I wish I were a doctor. I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night to wear wow. that old joke out, but um, uh, <laughs> play one on TV. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. Welcome and congratulations on your appointment to the Education Professional Standards Board. My name is Rob Akers, and I am the Associate Commissioner in the Office of Educator Licensure and Effectiveness. Just a little bit about myself. I'm a 28-year um, public educator, just like a lot of you all on there. Um, I spent 25 years in the public schools. Uh, I was a, an English teacher, a school counselor for all of six months, but I, was a, I spent the bulk of my time as a school-level administrator, um, did the coaching thing as well. So uh, I've walked in your shoes quite a bit. Um, uh, in addition, uh, I can really empathize with where you are. I was appointed to the EPSB in 2016 and served and uh, was was the chair of the board up until the time that I came to work at KDE uh, and to support the work of the Education Professional Standards Board. So uh, I, I very much appreciate and uh, come from a very personal viewpoint on the work that you're doing. So I'm not going to go into much detail about what you're going to be doing uh, and the work today on the decisions you're going to be making. I think we're going to have plenty of time to get you all ramped up on that later. But uh, just a couple thoughts, if you don't, if you don't mind. Um, your role on the board is extremely important. I want you to think about this. Every public educator in Kentucky has a certificate issued by the EPSB. Every educator preparation program must be approved by the EPSB. 
and every reported violation of the code of the teacher code of conduct uh, code of ethics is reviewed by the EPSB. So your decisions literally touch every educator in Kentucky, and that's a huge and very important role. Uh, and I think it's a pretty cool role. I really love doing this work with the board and with our office. I believe that now more than ever, society needs teachers and public educators to be the model of civility, empathy, inclusivity, and integrity. And that's why I love the work that we do and I'm honored to work with you in support of all of those ideals. Uh, our, let's see, I had just a couple shout outs that I think I need to bring to your attention. The first is our uh, educator certification specialists have since May 1st, and there, mind you, there are only six of these individuals have handled 18,000 individual, over 18,000 individual certification applications. And each of those come with multiple documents. And so they have, even though they're uploaded, there is nothing automated about this process. And they have hand processed uh, over 100,000 documents and 18,500 certificates. That number will probably double by the end of the year as we go through rank changes here in September. Um, I, but I, they do an incredible job with very limited human resources. I think when people think about the certification process and department, they think of this big room full of people and computers, and it's it's really a small, dedicated crew uh, who have, for the first time, been doing this remotely, so they're not even together doing this. And uh, interestingly, they have they had completed uh, almost a thousand more certificates by this time than they had last year and with with less um, resources. So I'm very proud of them under their leadership of Todd Davis and Crystal Horde. Also, our uh, branch for educator preparation has continued to work diligently to pivot to online work with accreditation and program approval and regulation review. You're going to get to know those folks quite a bit in the coming meetings as we have some big uh, work ahead of us in the area of educator preparation. Again, that that branch is under Todd Davis and Allison Bell. Uh, I would be very remiss if I didn't give a special compliment to Cassie Trueblood for all the work to make this meeting happen. As you can tell from the communication, she is very thorough, at great attention to detail, but also in her role for the last what, 11 or 12 years with EPSB, she served uh, as the as staff attorney, the lead prosecutor and general counsel, and she knows this work inside and out and will serve as an incredible uh, counsel to you guys on the board, and you can guarantee she will take good care of you. And just lastly, a quick shout out to our outgoing Commissioner Brown. Uh, for those of you who don't know him, and I really didn't know him uh, except for the last few months, um, he has done a phenomenal job in navigating this agency and public education through this unprecedented health crisis. Uh, and he's done it with transparency, inclusiveness, compassion, empathy, and professionalism. And I, I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate his leadership and how much we're going to miss him. And I wish him just extremely well as he, uh, pro as you will probably hear a sonic boom around midnight on the 14th as he heads back up to Louisville. So, Kevin, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for um, your steadfast leadership and the way that you have uh, gone all in in this interim time where you were just supposed to come in and keep the seat warm for the new guy. So thank you. This will be Commissioner Brown's last meeting uh, with this board. And as he said, we'll be transitioning over to Dr. Glass's administration. So Madam Chair, this is uh, my update and presentation. I'm happy to take any questions that the board may have. Does the board have any questions? Hearing none, first of all, I would like to thank you, Commissioner Brown, for everything that you have done to guide education through these unprecedented times. Every time, uh, personally, I would turn on the television and you would be providing updates. I always knew when I came into the building or I got updates from my school, it was a direct result of your input and your leadership and your direction. And so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Mr. Akers and Dr. Ellis, thank you as well. I also echo Mr. Akers' comments about uh, Ms. Trueblood. Uh, 
a week ago, we all found, roughly a week ago, we found out we were on this board, and here we are today having our first special meeting, and I think in large part that goes to the efforts of everyone in the staff, but especially Ms. Trueblood. Thank you. Madam Chair, if I could uh, just say a few more words. Thank you, all Absolutely. of you. Um, I <clears throat> happened to be, I guess, in the right place at the right time or the wrong place at the wrong time, depending on how you looked at it, when Chair Karen, then uh, State Board Chair Karen called to see if I would uh, do this. Um, and I can remember uh, seeing people's faces that I knew were still at the department. Um, and I knew uh, after seeing those faces that I could do it because that team was still in place. And um, that team is still largely in place, although we have lost some to other things that are still, though, helping us like Dr. Ellis. Um, and so Dr. Glass inherits a wonderful team. And I also would want to reiterate the team that uh, Rob has uh, there and that you have serving you as a board Cassie and all the others. I have also worked with them over the years in various capacities. Can't say enough about their work. A lot of what they do behind the scenes is uh, often thankless but necessary work uh, in any type of regulatory body uh, in a profession. Uh, and it's uh, sometimes unpleasant work. And uh, so I want to thank them for that. And then just finally, uh, two more uh, words I'll leave you with. You're going to be asked, I think, to be open-minded today and some decisions about flexibility. I just ask you to be open-minded as board members. This is a crisis situation. So some of the flexibilities, of course, are not where we would want to be in a normal time, um, but uh, look at it from a frame of reference of trying to get us through this school year the best we can and using your knowledge uh, to, to vote in that way. And then finally, to my colleagues on the board from Jefferson County, um, I'll be joining you back as your counsel. Um, I am going to take a few days off, but I look forward to, to working with you in that capacity. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. In Executive Order 2020-702, Governor Bashir appointed me to serve as chair and Josh Trosper to serve as vice chair of the EPSB. I appreciate this opportunity and look forward to working with each of you to carry out the important work of the board. Vice Chair Trosper and I will work with staff to schedule a training session to provide members with information on the statutory duties of the EPSB, a review of the current initiatives of the board, and an overview of the day-to-day -day operations. Additional information about this training session will be forthcoming. And that completes the report of the chair. Moving to action items. These items are presented to the board for action and will require a motion and a vote. Staff members from the Kentucky Department of Education's Office of Educator Licensure and Effectiveness will present each item. Ms. Allison Bell will present the first item. Thank you, Chair Rodzinski. Action item A is a request to approve remote student teaching observations for all educator preparation providers for the fall and the spring semester. The student teaching regulation 16 KAR 5040 requires a university supervisor to conduct a minimum of four observations of the student teacher in practice, a portion of which may be remote. The regulation also requires requests for those observations to be conducted remotely to be submitted and approved by the Education Professional Standards Board prior to those observations. Due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, the university supervisors are unable to complete in-person observations. The Kentucky Association of Colleges of Teacher Education has submitted a request for permission to conduct remote observations for all of the four minimum required observations. Approving these remote observations will provide flexibility for the, EP, for the providers 
to meet the required number of observations while protecting the safety of the students and the teachers in the schools. Staff is recommending that the EPS be approve this request to apply to the fall 2020 and spring 2021 semesters. Do you have any questions? I have a question, Ms. Bell. Absolutely. Uh, if we're doing them all remotely, is there a verification process in place to verify that the student being recorded is actually the person being uh, on the paperwork? Um, the university supervisors and all the preparation programs that require those have a, a tracking, reporting, and monitoring system that they have to ensure that those experiences are occurring and those observations do occur. It, it documents those experiences. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Since the this item is on the agenda for action, I will need a motion. Sherry Powers, I recommend approval. A motion is made by Dr. Powers. Do I have a second? Elijah Edwards, second. The motion before the board is approve remote student teaching observations for all educator preparation programs for the fall 2020 and spring 2020, 20, 2021 semesters. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Sayers. Melissa Conley Sayers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Healy. Julian Vasquez Healy, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have action item B presented by Associate Commissioner Rob Akers. Madam Chair, thank you. Uh, just as a little bit of a, an overview, action items B through E uh, are coming to you today, and obviously we'll go over those separately, but they're coming to you uh, as proposed flexibility around some waivers for district and schools for assignment of staff. Uh, these, these recommendations don't come lightly. They come from consultation with our uh, education cooperatives, with uh, HR directors, and with building level administrators and superintendents. So uh, these are, while we don't think that these will be exploited very much, we, we do feel like these are some, um, some areas of flexibility for which there is a need. So action item B is a recommendation uh, to approve a second issuance of emergency certification for the 2021 school year. And typically an emergency certificate is issued only once. However, districts are able to apply for a waiver of the regulation to issue a second. This would, uh, this would take away that need for that process so that districts as they are working through COVID related uh, challenges for staffing could issue, uh, could, uh, could go on and get an extra emergency for a teacher. Thank you. I will again need a motion. Uh, 
Donna Hedgepath, I make a motion. Thank you, Dr. Hedgepath, with the motion. Do I have a second? Tracy Hunt, second. Thank you, Ms. Hunt, with a second. The motion before the board is to approve second issuance of emergency certification for the 2020-2021 school year. Is there any discussion? Mr. Hearing, oh, yes. I'm sorry. This is Josh Trosper. Uh, just, I'm just clarifying. Um, that is only for this school year, and then it would go retroactive. Yes, sir. And all all items B through E are just for the 2021 school year. Thank you for that question. Thank you, Mr. Trosper. Are there any other questions? Any other discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire. Please call the roll. Melissa Conley Sailors. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Stephen Scrivener. Stephen Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Healy. Julian Vasquez Healy, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have action item C, Mr. Akers. Thank you. Action item C is a request to approve elementary certification to teach sixth grade for the 2021 school year. And what this is, is in, in Kentucky, an elementary certified teacher can teach up to sixth grade if it's in the same building. Uh, we're asking for a waiver of this regulation for this year so that districts and schools have extra flexibility to be able to assign teachers with elementary certificates to teach in another building at the same level if needed. Thank you. Is there a motion? I make a motion, Amanda Ellis. Thank you, Dr. Ellis, for the motion. Is there a second? Justin Mitchell, second. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. The motion before the board is to approve elementary certification to teach sixth grade for the 2020-2021 school year. Is there any discussion? Hearing none. Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Sailors. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. 
Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasky, Holly. Julian, <clears throat> Julian Vasky is highly, yes. The voting is complete. Thank you. The motion passes. Next, we have action item D, Commissioner Akers. Do we still have Commissioner Akers with us? I'm guilty of the mute. No Sorry. worries. <laughs> no worries. All right. Thank you. I was just reading away to myself. Um, <laughs> this, this action item D is a request to approve middle school certification to teach down to fourth grade in content areas for the 2021 school year. Uh, we've had some requests from some districts who are, are looking to try to uh, socially distance their elementary students while maybe being remote with middle and high school teachers and have asked for some flexibility in being able to utilize those teachers' um, content area skills to be able to teach down to some of those grade levels. And this uh, action item D is for middle school teachers to be able to teach down just in their content area to grade four. Thank you. Is there a motion? Sarah Green so moved. Ms. Green made the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Carmen Souter, second. Ms. Souter, second. Thank you. The motion before the board is to approve middle school certification to teach fourth grade in the content areas for the 2020-2021 school year. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley, Sal, yours. <clears throat> Melissa Conley, Sal, yours, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scribner. Steven Scribner, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Heilig. Julian Vasquez Heilig, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have action item E, Commissioner Akers. So action item E is very similar to what you just deliberated on with D, except this is asking for approval for high school certification to be able to teach down to fifth grade in the content areas for the 2021 school year, really for the same scenario as was, was shared in the previous action item. Thank you. I need a motion. Elijah Edwards, so moved. Mr. Edwards made the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Steven Scrivener, I'll second. Mr. Scrivener, second. Thank you. The motion before the board is to approve high school certification to teach down to fifth grade in content areas for the 2020 2021 school year. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley, Sellers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. 
Amanda Ellis. Yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn. Yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath. Yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt. Yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green. Yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield. Yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell. Yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers. Yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski. Yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener. Yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter. Yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper. Yes. Julian Vasquez Highleg. Julian Vasquez Highleg. Yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Thank you, Commissioner Akers. The board is now ready to review waiver requests. KRS 161.028 subsection 1R provides that the board has the authority to waive its administrative regulations when a request is submitted by an applicant for certification, a post-secondary institution, or a superintendent of a local school district. When requesting a waiver, the requesting party must submit to the board a written request along with appropriate justification for the waiver. Today, Allison Bell and Crystal Horde will present the waiver requests to the full board. The board will then need to determine if the requestor has demonstrated exceptional circumstances to justify the waiver. We will start with waiver A with Ms. Bell. Thank you, Ms. Rudinsky. Waiver A is a, a request to waive field experience hours due to district closures. Um, as you're aware, in the spring semester um, after March, a significant number of the school districts um, closed. Um, and so students who were trying to complete the field experience hours and meet that requirement um, were unable to do so. During the June 15th EPSB meeting, uh, requests from various institutions were submitted and approved to waive those field experience hours which were unable to be completed. Um, unfortunately, uh, the the request from Lindsay Wilson College uh, was omitted from that list. Um, so in an effort to allow a student who was who needed to meet that requirement in order to graduate, um, we had to submit a, a conditional waiver request in which there is a process by which the board chair and the chair of the waiver committee at the time, Dr. Hedgepath and Dr. Powers, were able to re review the request and grant a conditional waiver. At this meeting, we are asking the board then to follow up on that conditional waiver and grant full approval of the waiver. Are there any questions? Thank you. This item is on the agenda for action and I will need a motion. Sherry Powers, I make a motion to approve. Thank you, motion made by Dr. Powers. Do I have a second? Jackie Mayfield, Jacqueline Mayfield, second. Thank you, second by Ms. Mayfield. The motion before the board is to waive field experience clock hours due to district closures. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Sellers. 
Melissa Conley Salyers. Yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards. Yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis. Yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn. Yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath. Yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scribner. Steven Scribner, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Highly. Julian Vasquez Highly, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have waiver B presented by Ms. Bell. Is Ms. Bell with us? She's. I'm sorry, I, I forgot the mute thing as well. No worries. We are on uh, waiver B. Waiver B is a request from Western Kentucky University in collaboration with the LaRue County Public Schools to waive the grade point average requirement for admission to an option six alternative route program leading to secondary mathematics certification. The regulation 16 KAR 5020 establishes the admissions criteria for educator preparation programs leading to certification. This regulation identifies that in order to be admitted to a, a preparation program, um, the cumulative grade point average should be 2.75 on a 4.0 scale or a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale on the last 30 hours completed. LaRue County Public Schools is interested in hiring an applicant for a high school math position. Um, this candidate has a Bachelor of Science degree in mathematics. Um, his current Grade point average is 2.62 and his last 30 hours is 2.82, which does not meet the admission requirement. Both Western Kentucky University and LaRue County um, jointly submitted this waiver request in a, de in a desire um, to help fulfill LaRue County's need for a high school mathematics teacher. They have both affirmed their, their intent to provide support for the candidate during his first year of teaching, as well as throughout the enrollment, his enrollment in the program. Included in this request are letters of support and emails of support from the Dean of the College of Education at Western Kentucky University, as well as the assistant superintendent and high school principal of LaRue County Schools. Do you have any questions? Allison, I have a question. Uh, yes. Sherry, Sherry Powers. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you remind me on a uh, request like this in the past? What, what has been the, the practice? Um, honestly, Sherry, I, I cannot recall at this time uh, a specific instance where we've asked the board to waive the admission requirement for the GPA. 
Um, Cassie, do you recall whether or not there's been an instance to have a waiver like this? I believe that there was a similar waiver before the board um, last, I believe it was last August as well, also from Western Kentucky involving a teacher with a science uh, background who was um, asking for a waiver of the admissions GPA to be admitted to that program um, and also receive the temporary provisional. I do not recall what the GPA was at that time, just that it was slightly off from the admissions and the board did vote to approve that. I agree, Cassie. I recall the, the same. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other, are there any other questions? Thank you, Ms. Bell. Do I have a motion? Sarah Green, I would like to make a motion to approve the uh, request, request to waive field experience in this instance. Thank you. Ms. Green has made the motion. Is there a second? Jackie Ms. Mayfield. Green, all second. Oh, I heard two of you. I think I heard Ms. Mayfield first. Ms. Mayfield seconds. The motion before the board is to request to waive required GPA for admission to an option six program for secondary mathematics certification. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes. Stephen Scrivener. Stephen Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. It's Josh Trosper. Uh, I didn't know if I needed to mention this before or not, but I, if I can, I'm going to recuse myself from this vote. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, Mr. Trosper has recused himself. Uh, Jillian Vasquez Holly. Jillian Vasquez Holly Gibson. Motion passes. Moving now to waiver C, presented by Crystal Horde. Ms. Horde. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have um, first waiver C, uh, which is a um, a waiver of regulation 16 KAR 2020. This is the regulation that pertains to occupation based teachers um, and the requirements they have to um, do to renew their certification. Uh, typically, after they uh, have completed their uh, two years of the New Teacher Institute. Um, if an occupation-based teacher doesn't already have at least an associate's degree, they are supposed to be achieving six semester hours each year towards an associate's in their content area or towards an associate's degree in a vocational education program. Our first waiver is for a machine tool technology teacher by the name of Brian Priest. 
Um, he was previously enrolled at Western Kentucky University's vocational education program. However, according to the applicant, he um, there was an error in WKU system which prevented him from enrolling in two new courses for the current renewal. Um, as a result, he was unable to complete six hours for this year's renewal. Um, by the time the error was resolved, Western had permanently closed their vocational education program. Um, he has since re-enrolled um, and transferred to Murray State and is, will be on track to have his six hours uh, completed um, for during the course of the 2021 school year. Um, however, he is requesting a waiver of the six hour renewal requirement for the current school year. At this time, I need a motion. I have a question. Can I do a question before a motion? Yes. Or? I, yeah, I believe you can okay. ask the presenter a question. Okay, thank you. Um, what what proof do we have that there was an error in the WKU uh, system? We do not require anything um, to be submitted from um from WKU, um, the burden of proof is on the applicant. Um, with his waiver request, the documents that he submitted were presented um, under separate cover in the documents that were provided to you. So what you all have is what was provided to us. Basically, we're, we're taking his word for it, but I can confirm that Western's program um, has been, their vocational education program has been closed. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Ms. Hoard? Sarah Green, Fayette County. Um, yeah, I'm trying to find where that where that might be, just to make sure that he has. It does sound like it's a um, unfortunate um, incident. But I'm trying to find just to ensure that he has covered burden of proof in these documents that were sent. Um, Cassie, um, I'm looking here also in my P in the PDF of the documents. Um, I don't have the specific page number. Do you happen to know that? So uh, in the PDF, page 71 is the documents um, that you have from this individual on the waiver request. Um, and it, it is simply the waiver request form with that, which that individual filled out um, stating the circumstances. I, I don't believe that there was additional supporting documentation with that. I'm not sure. Oh. Uh, Ms. Gre Ms. Green, that asked that you asked that question. Do you yes, have further? Um, yeah. I think so. Um, I printed off all of these papers, so obviously with my, this being my first time, I'm still getting acclimated to the system that's used. Um, let me ask this question then. Um, do, do people, when they ask for a waiver in circumstances like this, do they typically provide supplemental documentation um, from the county, from the, the school that they're employed with, or from the institution? Does that, is that typical or is it? Sometimes they do. Um, I can tell you that um, the waiver was brought to my attention by um, the, uh, by Carmela Clark in the Office of Career and Technical Education. Um, her and the next, the next waiver that is on um, the agenda, uh, both were, uh, came to their attention that these two individuals were unable to renew their certificate um, due to the circumstances. Um, I did not, they, they just asked me what the steps were for the individuals to request the waiver. I provided them with the waiver form to submit back to us. I did not get any other documentation other than the completed waiver form. But the request did come through um, the Office of Career and Technical Education. Okay, thank you. I think that answers some of my 
So the next one, this happened to them. Uh, to this has happened again. Is that what you're saying? Well, it's it, when we get to that one, it's a slightly it's a slightly different circumstance with the with the second individual. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Green. Does anyone else have any questions for Ms. Ford? Um, Missy, call me Salyers. I have a question. Okay. Um, and and for, I'm new at this as well. Uh, I'm not sure how this works, but can can it be, um, I guess, tabled until this person has documentation from the university or give like a temporary waiver until the next meeting um, to, to have information, you know, like from West? Cassie? Yes, I'll defer to uh, Ms. Trueblood. <laughs> um, so the board does have options here, um, and I, I guess it, part of what you're going to be deciding here is if that's what you're looking at um, to be the exceptional circumstances here, if you do not want to grant this waiver unless it can be shown that this individual, um, there was actually an error in the system, um, then you could defer to the next board meeting, uh, meaning that we would ask the individual to provide additional documentation and then bring this request back to the board at that time. Um, that does mean that the individual would not be able to be certified until such time as he was back before the board and the board did approve that. Can I follow you to clear um, in my mind, you said the person would not be able to be certified until they came back before the board, correct? That is correct. Yes, this individual right now is unable to obtain their certificate because um, they do not meet the renewal requirements. So that is why they are requesting that the board waive the renewal requirement so that they can be issued the certificate. Um, and Crystal, if I am correct, this is a, a one year certificate that they are requesting. That correct? is correct. Yes, the, um, the, the occupation based certificates are one year certificates until they complete, um, in this case, their associate's degree program. Um, this is Lisa Rodzinski. I do have a question as well. Is it possible for the board um, to request that the individual not only take the six hours for this year, but also retroactively to, to catch up, take additional hours this year? And Chris, Crystal, how many does the individual have left? So let me... Um, I have that, um, have his item open here. Um, but as Crystal's looking at that, that is something that, um, the board has done before they have issued, um, these conditional this. waivers where the individual, we are saying, yes, the board waives this for this year and you are allowed to renew. However, before you can proceed after this year, you do have to show proof that you have met uh, the renewal requirements in both. So they ultimately made the requirements. It's kind of you're kicking the cane down the road for one more year. Right. And then they still have to make those requirements. Yeah. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. And he did not indicate on his, I'm looking at his um, provided uh, waiver request form. Um, he did not indicate how close he was to completing his program. Um, so I'm unsure of that, but I'm certain that um, depending on what the board's decision on this, I mean, it would be a one year certificate either way. Um, so it, it's not like it, it's not that the board would be approving this for a five year renewal. It would just be for a one year if if the board chose to go that direction. This is Josh Trosper, uh, quick question. Uh, with there not being no documentation, and I know the the technic, the ATC uh, is a little bit different umbrella, but you know, is is this uh, an area? You know, are they desperate, or do they have other applicants? You know, that would be something that I'm I'm interested in. Is it something that they've had to sub out for a while, or is uh, you know there are multiple applicants? I guess that would need to come from the principal of the, the technical right. school. Right. And 
I know that both of I, I know that um, this teacher is a mach, you know is a machine tool technology teacher. So I don't know how prevalent those those certifications and those um, occupation based teachers are um, if they're lining up to apply for these positions. Um, I, our our next or the the next one is also teaching in the same area. They actually happen to be in the same school district, so um, I don't know if they're in the same school or not. But um, but you know it is a it's a machine tool technology teacher, um, and I I don't know what the uh, what the need is on that. I mean we don't. Uh, there's not like a critical shortage list for occupation pays teachers. So I, I don't, I don't know where that stands. Uh, Ms. Hoare, this is Lisa Rizinski. One more question. Sure. Do we know, um, I know that obviously having taken this route myself, that that certificate is issued each year meeting the requirements of the Kentucky Department of Education. Is, is this his first year teaching or um, do we know how many I know we don't know how many hours he has, but do we know how, how many, is this his first request for a renewal or has it renewed in the past? Not up right now. Um, this is not his, um, this is his, let's see here. He had, this is his first year renewal. No, his second renewal after the NTI year. So he's been certified. This will. This is starting his fourth year, if that makes sense. It does. So starting his fourth year. So the first two years he would have been following the KDE NTI program. So right. he would not. He would not have had an educational requirement. And then right. in his third year, his educational requirement began, and he's indicating that he had technical issues with Western that resulted in him not being able to enroll with That's the programs. Am I stating that correctly? Yes. Okay. You are correct. Okay. I don't think I have a question. Uh, Elijah Edwards with a question. Did the, his principal or supervisor offer or uh, sent, did he include any like confirmation from them or did they endorse this in any way? He did not. Um, again, the only request that I received was from the Office of Career and Technical Education, um, indicating that they had someone who was unable to meet the renewal requirements and what did they need to do to pursue the waiver. So it came from um, it came from the Office of Career and Technical Education within KDE. I believe more than likely the principal or the individual probably reached out to their office when it when they realized that they weren't going to be able to renew. Well, and Crystal, this is Amanda Ellis. Also, mm -hmm. the Office of Career and Technical Education would work on behalf of the teachers if it's in an area tech center um, that is overseen by the state. So they KDE employs those principals and staff. They are KDE members. So would, that could be also a reason why they went through Office of Career and Technical Education because if they are in an area tech center, that would be who they would go to. That would be their central office. So. Right. Thank you for that clarification, Amanda. Are there any other questions for Ms. Hoard? Okay, at this time, I would need a motion. I'll make the motion, Amanda Ellis. Dr. Ellis has made the motion, thank you. Do I have a second? Justin Mitchell, oh. second. Thank you, I heard Mr. Mitchell first. Mr. Mitchell with the second. The motion before the board in um, pursuant to K, uh, 16 KAR 2 Zero two zero request to waive OCTE renewal requirements for Brian Priest. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, will you please call the roll? Melissa Conley Sailors. 
Melissa Conley Salyers? No. Elijah Edwards? Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis? Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn? Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath? Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt? Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green? Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield? Jacqueline Mayfield, no. Justin Mitchell? Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers? Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski? Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scrivener? Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter? Carmen? I'm sorry, I was on mute. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, I vote no. Julian Vasquez, High League. Julian Vasquez, High League, yes. The motion. Voting is complete. Sorry. The motion okay. passes. Next, we have waiver D. Ms. Horde. Thank you. Uh, waiver D is um, similar in that it is also um, a waiver of the six hour renewal requirement um, in 16 KAR 2020. And this waiver request, uh, Mr. Philip Simon, who is also a machine tool technology teacher, did complete three hours of the six hours required for renewal. Um, however, he did not um, get enrolled in courses this spring, and um, along with that, he, you know, I don't, in reading his waiver request, I, I don't want to anticipate what he was intending, but he, it sounds like he missed the deadline to enroll. However, with what happened due to covid um, he had to take on some extra teaching duties because he was teaching online. He said he was grateful that he didn't have a course um, this spring because of his extra teaching duties that he had to take on. Um, so in his case, he is requesting a waiver of having the six hours and asking that the board accept the three hours for renewal that he did complete for this renewal. And he did specify on his waiver request um, paperwork that he has one course, I believe, remaining to complete his program. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Horde? This is Amanda Ellis. Crystal, do you know if um, the gentleman is signed up for this final course this mm -hmm. fall? Um, let me look and see if he indicated that um, in his paperwork. Um, I apologize. I had these I had these tabs opened prior to the meeting. And Crystal, uh, this is Cassie. He yes. did state in there that um, as of right now, I only need two more classes for Correct. my degree and they will be completed this fall. Um, so okay. that that's the information that he has provided to the board. Thank you, Cassie. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much. I just didn't see that in the in the agenda book, but I was flipping through the pages, too. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. Um, is this a situation where um, it would be appropriate and or important to um, just to state that 
you know, if it is approved, it's approved conditional upon the completion of the two additional courses within the time frame he's outlined here. So, Crystal, to um, make sure that I, I'm on the um, correct page here, if he was approved today and issued an additional one-year certificate, mm -hmm. he would have to take those two classes prior to renewing at the end of next year, um, regardless of if the board made that caveat, correct? Correct, correct. He would have to have six hours completed by next summer anyway for a future one-year renewal. And, and that's because he's so close to the end of his program as well. Correct. Correct. Yes. And if and if this was a case where somebody had less than two classes remaining to complete, we would be looking for the degree completion uh, to move them from the one year to the five year certificate. Okay. So just so to, no, sorry. Okay. I'm just thinking. So there's not a concern that the same thing would happen this year that he would take one, one class and not sign up. If, I mean, let's say he takes one class this fall, decides to take the other in the spring, but he didn't take it. That was, that was my only concern. That he didn't find ourselves in a similar situation. Yes, um, I understand, Sherry. My point was just going to be that if the board did approve him today, I just wanted to clarify for the members that if the board approves this waiver today, he would be issued the one-year certificate. With that one-year certificate, he would be required to complete these courses um, to be able to renew or move on next spring. Otherwise, he would again have to come before the board to request a, a waiver. Um, staff would not be able to approve him again without completion of those courses. Okay, and right, and that would be information we would have at that point. Right. No. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Th thanks. This is Lisa Rosinski. I'd like to um, expand on Dr. Power's question. So if in the event he does not complete the requirements set out for the one year, one year certificate and he does come before the board next year, would we also, it, we're going to see a lot of cases over the next year and we may not remember him individually. When that waiver comes before us next year, is there a way to have that um, to have what's happened this year included, does that is that occur? That's probably a technical issue about the board itself. Yes, absolutely. If they have had to have a waiver before, um, then that information would be noted for the board um, to see when they see that second waiver. Okay, that that helps me. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Do I have a motion? Chair Green, I make a motion that we approve the one-year waiver. Ms. Green with the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Carmen Souter, I second. Ms. Souter with the second. Thank you. The motion before the board in reference to 16 KAR 2 colon 020 request to waive OCTE renewal requirements for Philip Simon. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. <clears throat> Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. 
Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, vote yes. Julian Vasquez, highly. Julian Vasquez. Julian Vasquez, highly. Yes. Thank you. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Waiver E is next. Ms. Horde. Ms. Horde. I'm going to mute. Ms. Sorry, Horde. Ms. It's going around today. I'm sorry. I started no talking away. <laughs> All right. 16 KAR 4030 is a request or is the waiver or the regulation for out of state prepared educators. Um, in this uh, instance, Kentucky School for the Deaf is requesting a waiver um, of 4030, which um, that regulation requires an out of state prepared educator to possess the equivalent certification from the state or jurisdiction where they did their teacher preparation program. So essentially, if a teacher completes a program out of state and they move to Kentucky, they're required to transfer that out of state certificate to Kentucky. We have to see that they ho have an equivalent certification. Um, in this case, KSD, Kentucky School for the Deaf, is requesting a waiver of that requirement uh, for uh, Mr. Douglas Brewer. Um, he completed his program in the state of Maryland, but he has not received um, the um, certificate in that state because he is residing here um, now. And in the past, um, some of our past board members will, will recall this, um, but usually when we have somebody that, when we have a district that has a job offer for someone and they want to request this waiver, typically the, the individuals have already taken the Kentucky required test and passed them. However, um, this applicant has not been able to do so because of the COVID um, uh, testing center closures. Um, since um, this, since COVID started up in middle of March and the testing centers closures um, or the testing center, many of the testing centers were closed and they're just now starting to come back online. Uh, Praxis has been offering Praxis at home, but only for some of their most uh, frequently used testing. It's not for all of their testing. So this individual, um, he has not been able to pass the Kentucky test yet um, due to the testing center closures and the limited availability of the test that he needs for Kentucky. Okay, thank you. Sure. This is Josh Trosper. Uh, I no noticed on the, if I'm not mistaken, on the documents um, that were sent out that they are requesting a six month temporary certificate. Do we I mean, is, is this going to be a case where it, if he if he doesn't have the ability to test at the Praxis Center, are we going to have to revisit this six months down the road? Um, you, I know you mentioned that the, the right. testing centers are starting to come back on, but I didn't know with the uncertainty. So what they are referring to with the six month temporary um, certificate is an out of state graduate who has completed testing or who has completed a program out of state mm -hmm. typically will provide us a copy of their um, out of state certificate with their Kentucky application. If there are no um, if there are no certified applicants for the position and Cassie, I don't have my law book in front of me, but I think that's KRS 161. 030. Am I correct on that? Yes, that's correct. Okay. KRS 161030 provides um, a route for out of state prepared teachers to receive an, um, a six month temporary certificate for Kentucky certification, provided there are no certified applicants for the position. That is the case here. There are no certified applicants for this position. However, he doesn't have the out-of-state certificate um, to qualify 
under that. So what we would be looking at is the a waiver of 4030 to allow him to qualify for the six month temporary certificate. And I hope I didn't just stumble over my words there. This is Lisa Rosinski. That's what I was reading in his waiver. And it does right. look like um, uh, the Kentucky School for the Deaf is supporting him in this yes. endeavor as well. Yes. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? Don Hedgepath, so move. Dr. Hedgepath, with the motion, thank you. Is there a second? Justin Amanda Mitchell. Amanda Ellis, second. I heard uh, Mr. Mitchell with the second first. Thank you. There is a motion. The motion before the board is to waive equivalent certification requirement for out of state prepared educator Douglas Brewer. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers. Yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards. Yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis. Yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn. Yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath. Yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt. Yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes. Steven Scribner. Steven Scribner, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vosky, High League. Julian Vosky's High League, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have Waiver F, also with Ms. Horde. Thank you. Thank waiver you. F is similar to the previous waiver. Um, it is also a waiver of 16 KAR 4030. Um, this one is our requested on behalf of Mr. Matthew Farwell by Kentucky School for the Blind. Uh, Mr. Farwell completed his teacher preparation program in the state of New York. Um, and prior to relocating here, um, similar circumstances, the testing that, that he's required to have is not um, one of the tests that's given as frequently. It's not available through the um, testing at home from what I recall. Um, they are also uh, requesting what would be the Waiving, waiving the requirement to possess the out-of-state certificate so that he can um, receive the six-month temporary certificate to get our testing. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Horde? Do I have a motion? Sarah Green, so move. Ms. Green, with the motion, thank you. Do I have a second? Stephen Scrivener, I'll second. Mr. Scrivener with the second. Thank you. The motion before the board is in reference to 16 KAR 4 colon 030 request to waive equivalent certification requirement for out of state prepared educator Matthew Farewell. Farwell. Are there is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. 
Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez, Holly. Julian Vasquez, Holly, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have waiver G. No, I'm sorry, F. Waiver F. Waiver F. Miss Ward? You were correct, oh, I believe. I am correct. Thank you. I wrote the wrong number down. Thank you. F. Waiver G. Waiver G um, is a request for waiver of 16 KAR 6010, which is um, the assessment regulation. In that regulation, it establishes that praxis assessments uh, for certification are valid for five years from the date taken or from the date of assessment. Um, Miss Lori Gauss-Pole Gauss Wall um, is um, pursuing initial teacher certification through Thomas More University through their proficiency program. She actually started that process with them in November of 2019. I believe she might have actually been working with them as early as um, May to uh, summer 2019, but uh, they were admitting her to the program in fall of 2019. She had met all requirements to be admitted for teaching Spanish, except she lacked the case and mission test scores. Um, she registered to take those tests in spring of 2020. Um, this spring, however, the tests were canceled due to COVID. Um, from what I recall with her paperwork, she registered a second time. I believe those were canceled again. Um, in the meantime, her two tests that she had taken actually for the certification, which was her principles of learning and teaching test and her Spanish test, um, those two scores were taken. Uh, one was May 21st of 2015 and July 30th of 2015. So her, by the time she finally took and was able to pass the case to be admitted into the program so that Thomas Moore could recommend her for initial certification, her Praxis two test scores had just expired. One of them expired this past May and one in July. So with the support of Dr. I believe Christina Petrosi from Thomas More, I believe she included a letter of support with the documentation. Um, they are requesting, um, Ms. Galsipole Wall is requesting a waiver of the five year requirement of 6010 to allow those expired test scores to stand. Thank you, are there any questions for Ms. Ward? At this time, I need a motion. Elijah Edwards, so move. Mr. Edwards, with the motion, thank you. Do I have a second? Sarah Green, I second. Ms. Green, second, thank you. The motion before the board is in reference to 16 KAR 6 colon 010, request to waive five year test recency requirement for Lori Gauss Paul Wall. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers. Yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards. Yes. Amanda Ellis. 
Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scribner. Steven Scribner, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez, Kids High League. Julian Vasquez Halleck, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. Lastly, in the waivers, we have waiver H, also presented by Ms. Horde. Thank you. Waiver H is a waiver of 16 KAR 4090. Um, this is the a request to waive the six semester hour of reissuance, reissuance requirements for an expired certificate. Um, this waiver is requested by Mrs. Patsy McCoy and is supported uh, by principal of Phelps High School, um, Mike Hamilton. Miss um, McCoy was a Kentucky certified teacher. I believe the earliest record I saw in our system of her certification in Kentucky was from 1989. Um, however, she spent the majority of her teaching career in West Virginia. Um, at the time that her teaching certificate in Kentucky expired, um, that was when Kentucky still required um, or had, had the um, the requirement regulation that you had to be working towards your your rank two in order to renew um, at the last time that her certificate expired in kentucky um, which was in um, 2000 2009 um, she was she had been and was at that time a teacher in west virginia and had been for several years um, she is now since retired from West Virginia. She subs often in the Pike County School District um, and Phelps High School would like to employ her as a secondary science teacher since she holds both biology and chemistry certification. Um, however, being retiree, she's really not interested in or, you know, does would rather not have to go back to pursue six graduate hours to renew her expired Kentucky certificate since Kentucky no longer requires a master's degree. Um, so the district or, or the, the school and Miss uh, McCoy are requesting a waiver of the six semester hours of graduate coursework to reissue an expired certificate based on the fact that she has maintained um, her West Virginia certificate and has experience teaching in that state. Thank you, Ms. Hoard. Are there any questions? Thank you. Is there a motion? Sarah Green, so moved. Ms. Green with the motion. Thank you. Is there a second? Jackie Mayfield, second. Ms. Mayfield with the second. Thank you. The motion before the board is in reference to 16 KAR 4 colon 090 request to waive reissuance requirements for Patsy McCoy. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Chesser, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Sellers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. 
Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Haley. Julian Vasquez Haley, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes. That completes waivers. And we are now going to move on to alternative routes to certification applications. We have two alternative route to certification applications. These applicants are pursuing the option number one, exceptional work experience route to certification. This is one of the alternative routes established by the legislature in KRS 161.048. An applicant with exceptional work experience must have an offer of employment from a local school district, a bachelor's or graduate degree meeting minimum GPA requirements and an academic major or a passing score on the academic content assessment in the area in which certification is being sought. The board will need to determine if the applicant's work experience constitutes exceptional work experience. The applications will be presented by Ms. Horde. Letter A, Ms. Horde. Thank you. Uh, letter A is for Mr. Zachary Boone. Um, Jefferson County Public Schools is requesting um, certification uh, through the option one route, which um, just to, or before I get into this, just to give a little bit more um, in-depth information about this, since most of you all are new, uh, six, uh, KRS 161048 is the statute that allows uh, for the option one route. Um, these individuals who come through this route have to be approved by the EPSB. They put together a portfolio, which you all have been provided as part of the, um, the documents, um, that includes an application uh, from the district, um, a resume showing their work experience, um, three to five recommendation letters. Um, they provide a narrative on how they will use their experience to um, teach to the standards, um, and then also any documentation of their expertise. If they've been published, if um, articles that have been written by, by them or about them, um, it's kind of their, their chance to shine the spotlight on themselves to show why they are an expert in this particular area. Um, we have two this, um, this time. Um, the first one, Zachary Boone, he um, and Jefferson County Schools are applying for certification in the area of dance, which is a K-12 certificate. He has a bachelor's of fine arts in dance, and he has 20, he has over 20 years um, in the industry as uh, both a choreographer, um, a dancer, um, I believe a stage direction, um, trying to remember some of the things that were on there. He had a very, um, a, a, a very broad resume um, of sources. So he met all of the requirements um, of 161048 and, um, uh, and, and we're seeing you know, the, the district is seeking your, the board's approval for this. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ms. Ord? Is there a motion? Justin Mitchell, I so move. Mr. Mitchell with a motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Josh Trosper, second. Vice Chair Chosper with the second. Thank you. 
The motion before the board is to grant alternative route to certification uh, in reference to KRS 161.048 to Zachary Boone. Any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes. Stephen Scrivener. Stephen Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Holly. Julian Vasquez Highly, yes, thank you. Um, voting is complete. The motion passes. Next, we have application B, also with Ms. Horde. Thank you. Um, application B is for Ms. Helen Payne. This application is also um, requested on behalf of Ms. Payne by Jefferson County Public Schools. Ms. Payne is, uh, she, they are applying for certification in the area of art. Uh, she has over 18 years of work experience in the field of art um, as an adjunct art professor, as well as conducting art workshops. Um, she's had gallery shows. Um, she has um, been a teaching artist. She's also um, taught bedside art at Ronald McDonald House, so she had a, a wide variety of experiences. Um, she has a bachelor's in art. She also has a master's of fine arts. Um, GPA and everything met all of the requirements under 16 KAR, um, I'm sorry, KRS 161048. Are there any questions for Ms. Ward? Is there a motion? I make the motion, Amanda Ellis. Dr. Ellis, I heard you. Thank you. With the motion, is there a second? Jackie Go ahead. Mayfield, second. Uh, I heard uh, Ms. Mayfield with a second. Thank you. The motion before the board is to grant alternative route to certification pursuant to KRS 161.048 to Helen Payne. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rodzinski. Lisa Rodzinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter. Yes. Josh Trosper. 
Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez, High League. Julian Vasquez, High League, yes. Voting is complete. And the motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Hoare. That does complete the alternate routes to certification. I will now open the floor to any board member for board comments. Does anyone have anything they wish to share? All righty, I do not hear anyone uh, wishing to make comment at this time. At this time, I believe we are ready to go into closed session pursuant to KRS 61.810 subsection 1C and J to conduct a character and fitness review and to review potential actions relating to complaints and reports. At this time, I will need a motion to go to enter into closed session. Stephen Scrivener, I'll make a motion to enter closed session. Mr. Scrivener with the motion. Thank you. Do I have a second? Tracy Hunt, second. Ms. Hunt with a second. Thank you. The motion now before the board is a motion to enter into closed session. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Cheshire, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers present. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Yes, for closed session. Kathy Gunn. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes. Steven Scrivener. Steven Scrivener, yes. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Haley. Julian Vasquez Haley, yes. Voting is complete. The motion passes, and we will now. Um, we are now ready to move into closed session. We will take a 10 minute break and I ask that all members return by, I have uh, 3 15 p.m. Eastern time. So 3 23 p.m. Eastern time. And for the staff as a reminder recording. We are now back in open session. At this time, we will vote on those items discussed during closed session. First, we will vote on character and fitness. Vote to approve numbers one through 17 and numbers 19 through 27. Vote to deny numbers 18 and 20. Is, is there a motion to accept? Uh, Chair, actually, I believe okay. your, your votes on that were um, to approve with condition. Approve with, with a, on numbers 18 and 20. 18 and 20. I'll, I'll correct that. I'll restate Eight, that. That's okay. 18 and 28. Okay. So 18 and number 28 approve with conditions. Numbers 18 and number 28 approve with conditions under character and fitness. Thank you. Now, do I need a motion? No. No, we'll just do the vote. And I will ask uh, Ms. Sharp, call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. 
Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes on all. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes on all. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, approval of all. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, approve on all. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, approve on all. Lisa Rudzinski. Lisa Rudzinski, approve on all. Stephen Scribner. Stephen Scribner, approve on all. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, approve on all. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, approve on all. Julian Vasquez Heilig. Julian Vasquez Heilig, approve on all. Voting is complete. Moving on to CA 4 online character and fitness. Approve number one and number three through five. Deny. Number two, Ms. Sharp, will you call the roll? Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes on all. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes on all. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, approval of all. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes on all. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes on all. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes to all. Stephen Scribner. Stephen Scribner, yes to all. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, uh, yes to all. Julian Vasquez Healy. Glenn Vasquez Highly, yes to all. Voting is complete. Moving on to agreed orders. Reject number one, numbers two through 23, accept. Ms. Sharp, will you call the roll? Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes on all. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes to all. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, agree on all. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes on all. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes on all. Lisa Rudzinski. Lisa Rudzinski, yes to all. Stephen Scribner. Stephen Scribner, yes to all. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes to all. Julian Vasquez Heilig. Julian Vasquez Heilig, yes to all. Voting is complete. 
The next section, findings of fact, conclusions of law, recommended order, and appeal rights, except on number one, findings of fact, except um, conclusion of law and recommended order, except on number two, findings of fact, conclusions of law, and recommended order. Ms. Sharp, will you call the roll, please? Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna uh, Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell recused on one, yes on number two. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes on all. Lisa Rudzinski. Lisa Rudzinski, yes to all. Steven Scribner. Steven Scribner, yes to all. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes. Julian Vasquez Heilig. Julian Vasquez Heilig, yes to all. Voting is complete. Moving on to our last section educator cases. Numbers 79 through 82 refer to hearing. Numbers 86 through number 109 dismissed. Ms. Sharp, will you call the roll? Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, yes. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, yes. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. Kathy Gunn, yes. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes on all. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, yes. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, yes. Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, yes on all. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes on all. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes on all. Lisa Rudzinski. Lisa Rudzinski, yes to all. Steven Scribner. Steven Scribner, yes to all. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes to all. Julian Vasquez Heilig. Julian Vasquez Heilig, yes to all. Voting is complete. Thank you. That completes the voting on case decisions. I would like to remind the board that the next meeting is scheduled for October 12th, 2020, and hopefully we will be in person at the Sauer offices in Frankfurt. And I would further like to thank all members of the board for your diligent work in ramping up quickly to be prepared for this meeting today, and especially thank the staff of the Kentucky Department of Education uh, for your assistance in helping us uh, navigate the waters today. Thank you. At this time, I will need a motion to adjourn. Justin Mitch Scribner, motion to adjourn. Justin Mitchell, I heard you. A uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, do I have a second? Carl Jackson. Souter, second. Uh, Ms. Souters, second. Thank you. The motion before the board is a motion to adjourn. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, Ms. Sharp, please call the roll. Melissa Conley Salyers. Melissa Conley Salyers, present. Elijah Edwards. Elijah Edwards, present. Amanda Ellis. Amanda Ellis, yes. Kathy Gunn. 
Kathy Gunn, present. Donna Hedgepath. Donna Hedgepath, yes. Tracy Hunt. Tracy Hunt, present. Sarah Green. Sarah Green, is she available? Jacqueline Mayfield. Jacqueline Mayfield, present. Justin Mitchell. Justin Mitchell, yes. Sherry Powers. Sherry Powers, yes. Lisa Rosinski. Lisa Rosinski, yes to adjourn. Stephen Scribner. Stephen Scribner, yes to adjourn. Carmen Souter. Carmen Souter, yes to adjourn. Josh Trosper. Josh Trosper, yes to adjourn. Julian Vasquez Hiley. Julian Vasquez Hiley, yes to adjourn. Voting is complete. The motion carries. We are now adjourned.